This is another unconstrained optimization problem from the Calc 3 class. So this is from the, the second problem for our handout. I, I believe we ended up doing the third one. There were three there. So this is a problem about an open rectangular box having volume of 32 cubic centimeters. What are the lengths of the edges giving the minimum surface area? Now I tried something earlier and uh, it didn't work out, but that's okay. I wanted to show you how one way that you might think that you could do this problem, but it doesn't work and I want to show you why. Okay, so I always do the problems before I do them for you. So here's my scratch work. So I wrote down the volume is 32 uh, cubic units of length width height. There's my open top box. So I created my surface area. So there's one uh, space on the bottom that's width and length and two sides that's height and length and then two sides front and back that are width and length. So that's my surface area. So what I did is I did the gradient of S if, as if it was a three variable function. So I have my three gradients here, um, S sub X, S sub L, S sub W, S sub H. Now I set them all equal to zero, find where the gradient equals zero. And what I end up, you might not be able to see it, I don't know. But as I worked and worked, I ended up getting that L was zero. Well, that's not ever true. <laughs> so I decided to do it the way they were supposed to do it. And let's see what happens. So again, using a function of three variables won't work with these kinds of problems, or at least this problem. So let's try the problem the way we learned how to do it without constraint. So let's start again. So I have my rectangular box. Always draw a picture if you can. I mean, I'm no artist here, but I get the idea that this is an open top box. Label width, length, height. You can use X, Y, Z if you want. I don't really care, but uh, I like to use whatever is corresponding to the problem. So then I know the volume of a box is length times width times height, whether it has a top or not. And according to this problem, that's supposed to be 32 square cubic centimeters. Now surface area. Um, I did it in terms of length, width, and height. That's a great place to start so that you make sure that you have this right. And then the next steps make sure it will be right. So I have two sides that are width and height, front and back. So two width and heights. There are two lengths and height sides, this side and that side there. And there's only one side that's just width times length because it's open top. Now to eliminate one of these variables, I actually utilize this. Now this is a type of constraint, but it's not the same type of constraint that we would use with Lagrange multipliers because again, it's in terms of three variables. So this guy implies that I can say that length is equal to 32 divided by WH. And I'm going to use that instead of writing the L here to get myself a function of two variables, W and H. So let's see, this is going to be two WH plus two times 32 over WH, substitute L there, times H, plus W times L, 32 over WH. And let's do some simplifying. Um, hmm. So the H is cancel here. I get two WH plus 64 over W, plus those W's cancel. 32 over H. Now, since I know I have to take the derivatives, I am going to do this. It just helps me uh, get the derivatives right. Move those variables up there so the rules are real easy for derivative taking. Good. Now, um, again, I'm trying to minimize surface area. So that means I do have to have the critical points. Well, also too, let's think about the domain of our function and uh, how our function works. So take a look at this guy here. I know that my width and height uh, can't be zero. So if I think about W and height, I know they can't be any less than zero or even zero because if they were zero, this would be undefined. And technically they both can go off to infinity. Now in the previous problem, I had you look at this function and we can look at it the same way. Dominating terms when you're close to zero are the ones that have the denominators here. 
So when I'm close to zero with W, that means that this whole thing goes off to infinity, goes up to infinity. Everything's positive here. Same thing with H. When this gets close to zero, this is all going off to infinity. This goes to zero, but that guy goes to infinity. Then when I think about it, large values here, I have W and H to worry about. That's a dominating term. When these numbers are big, that goes to zero. But when these numbers are big, they go to infinity, positive infinity. So here I have everything going up on the ends. So that means whatever our critical point is has to be a local minimum, or I'm sorry, a global minimum, global minimum. So once we find the critical point based on our investigation of this function, we know that we have a global minimum. Now, when you do this on a test, you might want to write up a little paragraph about what I said regarding these limits. So again, everything here is positive. When I'm close to zero with W or H, this goes to infinity. Everything else goes to zero. When I'm close to, when I have big numbers for W and H, these guys go to zero and that goes off to infinity. So that means everything is increasing on the ends. That's the key. Therefore, critical point is a global min. Good. Now let's find that critical point. So what we need in order to find any critical point is we've got to find the gradient of S and set it equal to zero. So here's my S. Let's do the gradient. So let's do with respect to W first and then H second. So the derivative with respect to W. So that's going to be 2H minus 64W to the minus 2, and that's a constant. So it should be zero. Uh, the derivative with respect to H, so 2W. That's going to be 0, and this will be minus 32h to the minus 2. If I'm going to set this equal to 0, I'm going to get rid of those negative exponents. So I have 2h minus 64 over w squared equals 0, and then 2w minus 32 over h squared equals 0. Let me square that out. Let me say that again. Get rid of those negatives. So this guy equals 0, Put bring the w down. That guy equal to zero, bring the h down. That's the system we have to solve. Now, this isn't easy to do elimination because of you know where the variables are in the numerator and denominator. So we're going to use substitution. So let's take this guy and solve for h. 2h is equal to 64 over w squared. Divide everything by 2 or multiply by 1 half. That's a better way of thinking about it. So h equals 64 over w squared times 1 half. That cancels, that leaves me with 32. So h is equal to 32 over w squared. Now I'm going to take that guy and plug it into h here. Now be real careful when you do this kind of algebra. Take your time because if you start doing stuff in your head, you're going to screw up. Trust me, I've screwed up enough on this problem early, many years ago. So I have 2w minus 32, and I'm going to take what h is and make sure it's squared. And now I'm going to solve for W. Take your time on this. Watch carefully. So I have 2W minus 32 over 32 squared. I'm not going to actually write that number out over W to the fourth. So I'm going to take the reciprocal of this and multiply. Let me go up here where I have a little more room. 2W minus 32 times W to the fourth over 32 squared. So that cancels with that. 2w minus w to the fourth over 32 equals 0. Since this is equal to 0, I'm going to factor this side, factor out a big old fat w, 2 minus w to the third over 32. So what this means is that w is equal to 0, which can't be possible because we have a box with volume. But 2 minus w to the third over 32 can equal 0. So that leaves me with w to the third over 32 equals 2. w to the third equals 64. So w equals 4. I'm running out of paper here all of a sudden. Let's see if I can find another semi-blank one here. Keep writing. So let's see, now I know the W is 4. 
If w is 4, I know that, uh, shoot. If w is 4, okay, it's still going. My computer's doing weird things. If w is 4, then h is 32 over w squared. h is 32 over w squared. That's 32 over 16, which is 2. And then if I go all the way back to the top, I know that length times width times height is supposed to be 32. So length times width times height is 32. Length is equal to 32 over 8, which is 4. So my critical point turns out to be length, width, height, and this is a local min occurs here. Now let's look at the problem. Let's see what it actually is asking us. Does it actually ask us for the surface area or just the dimensions? So it says an open rectangular box is 32 centimeters. What are the lengths of the edges giving minimum surface area? It doesn't ask us what that surface area is. So I just have to answer the question, the dimensions. With minimal surface area, I'm sorry about my handwriting, but you can hear what I'm saying. With minimal surface area, R, length of four centimeters, width of four centimeters, and height of two centimeters. Dimensions with minimal surface area are length of four centimeters, width of four centimeters, and height of two centimeters. So let me tell you, the only way that I could keep things straight is by defining the letters that I have and making sure I keep them in the same order all the time. That way I know what I'm solving for and I can follow my work. I hope you found this helpful. I sound like the guy on Math is Power for You. Hmm.